So hi everybody, I'm Amelia Tomasicchio, CEO and co-founder at Cryptonomist. And today I'm very happy to interview Robin Lin, the co-founder of Better.ai, and, uh, and Jack, an advisor of the, of the, the same project, of course. Um, um, just to start, in order to, to present the project, how would you um, explain better to, to our public? So what, what does he do and uh, um, how, is, how are you helping the, the, the crypto community? Absolutely. Thank you, Amelia. It's great to be here. I want to just preface this by saying that CrowdX started as a crowdsourcing model where a bunch of people got together because they wanted to find good projects. And the reason was because we were all getting into projects that were scams or that we weren't sure how to actually navigate in DeFi as uh, new projects were launching on a daily basis. Uh, so this community got together and we actually ended up figuring out a criteria and strategy, which we ended up teaching people and training people, uh, which ended up becoming scouts and vetters, which ended up becoming vetter platform and vetter token. And now the CrowdX calendar, which is a robust integrative feature that uses different levels of AI technology, intuitive Oracle features, sorting features. Um, there's actually a feature that allows any kind of member and user to come into the CrowdX calendar and to, to see and color code a ranking system of the, the scouts previous posting history to actually see in the future the validity of what they're posting to ensure that they're actually getting into a decent project. Obviously, this isn't financial advice and you have to do your own research, but CrowdX is a research tool to really help investors and also to incentivize developers to want to come in and have their project promoted on the calendar. So there's a huge amount, thousands of people working together. So it's, uh, I call it like a heartbeat. And any developer will know that you can't just have a good tech, you actually have to have a good community to withstand the test of time when it comes to these projects in the market, especially when there's projects happening, you know, on a on a moment to moment whim. Uh, so we, we, we really pride ourselves and Jack, you can speak to this a bit. We really pride ourselves in bringing integrity to the DeFi space and in Web3 uh, and really creating a new level of standard, uh, especially in, in the Binance Smart Chain, but also with the multi-chain. Jack, yeah, do you want I, to, I, to add something? What's uh, your role uh, also as an advisor at Better? Yeah, so, uh, you know, on the just, just to say I completely agree, Robin, I think that was a really good summary of of the CrowdX platform and kind of where, where Better began uh, where it's where it's headed um i think it's really important from you know this the word regulatory that is always brought up in the crypto space and i think it's great to have a platform that showcases that it doesn't need to be a third party there's a lot of you know community driven regulation there just for uh increasing the quality of projects development utility and it's all kind of built around that community and like-minded individuals who are coming together and you know that uh i just think that's such a great scenario such a great platform and, and the development beyond that as well and how to scale that is just never ending there are so many options and, and possibilities and uh yeah you know for me my role as you asked amelia is uh you know just coming on board uh kind of it's, you know it's been a, a bit while getting up to speed uh robin and the rest of the team are just sprinting constantly so it's been a lot of uh, moving forward as well as reaching back and, and checking in on everything, getting to know the whole team who are just amazing, dedicated people. Uh, everybody there just works so hard, which is great to see. There's such a positivity around the whole ecosystem, whether it's the internal team or the, you know, the community, whatever it may be. And it's just working with all those teams and making sure everybody has what they need to scale, to grow, to make sure everything's running efficiently, to make sure, you know, the, uh, the, the wider team have the resources they need to, you know, reach those future goals and keep evolving the VETA ecosystem. So, yeah. 
So as you as you mentioned before, you are launching your own uh, launchpad um, as well uh, as a live uh, uh, DAP. So um, which sort of um, common projects are these? Can you can you explain us a little bit more about the uh, CrowdX and uh, and Skylabs? Sure. So CrowdX is the current live. D app that, that we were speaking to, which is a fully function functional calendar. And if you go to vetterplatform.app, you can actually come in, you can see the calendar and you can see projects that are being listed. And if you hold certain a, a certain number of token of vetter, it gives you access to tiers, which also incentivizes the users and members to want to hold, which um, also incentivizes diamond hands, which is very helpful in projects uh, to, to be able to in incentivize users to hold on to the token uh, versus just come and, and, you know, the pump and dump typical situation. Um, so CrowdX is um, constantly innovating and developing, but it is fully functioning and, and members use it to sort for projects that 2X to a 100X. And I'll mention uh, that Purple Scouts the people who come and post projects, if their color code is purple, we in January did this big audit and 91% of the results of all purple scouts had posted projects that did a 2x gain or more after they posted the project with their with their project launch. So um, if you had gotten into a project from a purple scout, there was a very high likelihood that you 2x or more in in a uh, in the projects from from what you found on the calendar, so so it also brings people together uh, as that crowdsourcing model, and it it does make it a lot easier because the research time is reduced. So if you're in Telegram all day and you're listening to your friends or you're listening to these whale groups, and you're trying to keep track of things, and are you getting in? Is he getting in? Did he get in? What's going on? It's very overwhelming, and so the calendar makes it a lot easier. Uh, I mentioned the intuitive. Order. Oracle feature, you can filter the search based off of time frames. I'm somebody who does not want to come into a project and have to get out within 24 hours of the project launching. I want actually maybe seven days a week or 30 days, and I want my money to just sit there a little bit, and I don't want to have to rush out. And our calendar actually does let you know based off of previous track records and history, um, what you're looking at when you get into a project based on the filtering. Um, and that, that happens at level tier four when you hold uh, 500,000 or more vetter tokens. So, uh, so that's CrowdX. Uh, as far as the Skylabs brand go, there's actually two different launch pads. Skylabs is gonna be our high tier IDEO incubator. And we're gonna be uh, onboarding, developing projects at a very high level. So they're gonna go through KYC and scrutiny. And they're also gonna have more of our support so our Skylabs brand will have an onboarding process. Uh, I always like to talk to developers about um, knowing not just how to raise funds initially, but how to utilize those funds, knowing how to get their marketing going strategically, having a plan in place, knowing how to use that budget and build that community over the course of three to six months. So they actually have an, an ongoing steady process. Uh, and, and so we're going to be attracting high quality developers to the Skylabs brand. These are developers who want to see their project long standing. Uh, the V sale is another launch pad that is going to be um, more about a revenue generator for the Vetter platform. And we're going to be taking on more projects, but it's also going to be higher scrutinized than other launch pads out there. Um, these projects will be vetted on the, the CrowdX calendar. So we're going to have all-star vetters and scouts and voters come in to actually uh, do the research for the launch pad and those uh, projects will be vetted on the vetter calendar. So we're going to start to see even more of uh, this robust build out with vetter calendar as the launch pads grow. We're also going to, Jack, you can mention a couple of other things with staking. Uh, we have a multiplier as well. We have different um, uh, charting tools. We have a swapping system. We have technical analysis coming. So there's a lot of new developments. Uh, we have Vetter University coming as well, which we're going to be featuring and highlighting uh, professionals in the crypto space to bring awareness into the industry to help people navigate the space better. Um, so 
yeah, just really bringing integrity, not just with the Binance Smart Chain Network, which is what we're launching with, but uh, again, intending to uh, to be able to launch projects across every different network. So it's really important to us to to keep building, to keep expanding. And I will mention that our entire dev team is in-house. We're eight strong developers now, and we're still growing. Uh, we have a very solid uh, lead dev, Jeremy James, with us, who's part Kepco founder. Um, and he is uh, leading the in-house dev. And he always says that having an in-house dev team is so important, which is what I found as well, uh, to maintain this integrity and the trust and the build out of the model. So uh, what did I miss, Jack? I, not much, I don't think. I, that, that was a perfect summary. And just just coming off the back of that, you know, that in-house dev team and relating to what you said about staking, it's a, an overarching, um, you know, movement there within within the, the the Veta ecosystem, which is building the quality that you're also trying to get the the entire crypto space to utilize as well. You know, that's what this this almost a, a quality control and incentivization of, you know, good developers, good operational teams coming forward and actually building good utility and launching that into the space, you know, just increasing the the quality of the 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 um the blockchain and cryptocurrency space as a whole. And, you know, with that, I think that ethos is is massively internal and it's and it shines, you know, outside building the ecosystem. I can see that, you know, with regards to the staking uh, I won't say too much on 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 accurate points just because I'm not too sure what's public at the moment. But with regards to the staking, uh, I can absolutely testify to the fact that it's really innovative. And every idea that that you know I've been involved in so far is super innovative. And you know it's it's using those uh, fantastic features and services that already exist in the space and maybe they don't, but the ones that do, the team is working day and night to innovate them and change them and make them something unique and special and constantly evolve, you know, all of these features and, and products and services that are being launched out into the ecosystem. And uh, yeah, I think uh, just to reiterate, I think it's a testament of, of what the Vetter ecosystem is trying to build as well. And how do you think, how, how does this work in um, to launch a project in a, in a bear market? Is it harder? Is it, uh, you think it's the good time? Why did, did you decide to, to do it in this moment? So for a lot of us, when we, at least myself, when my business partner and I got involved with, with crypto, um, early 2017, right before Bitcoin hit its first big all-time high for you know, the masses, um, we got in and um, did very well. And then made a very bad move because we didn't know what we were doing. And, um, you know, it's kind of a make it or break it where at that moment um, you either keep going and you learn how to adapt um, or you back away because it's too much and you can't handle it. And so um, Mike and I, you know, decided to do whatever we could to understand how to navigate the space early on, at least early on for us, not for some Um so that really was uh, a learning experience and a growth experience of studying um, from the likes of Tony Robbins and Warren Buffett and understanding, you know, some of these concepts are so simple, but you can't overlook them. Uh, and Warren Buffett always says to buy low, sell high. And yet what happens is a lot of uh, our emotions and the overwhelm, life gets in the way, stress, stress gets in the way, and we go off a whim or we go off of, uh, off of uh, an idea that we have or, or just, you know, something that, that triggers us to, to sell or to buy at the wrong time instead of what we actually know, which is the charting and, you know, the RSI and all, and all the stochastics that we, that we can look at and measure um, as well as behaviors in the market. But if we just go back to the simplistics, you know, buy low, sell high, it's actually very, very clear um, that the multi, multi-millionaires, you know, are, are generated in, in these moments. Um, mm -hmm. This is actually when uh, the, the greatest fear in the market, we actually want to pay attention and we actually want to be involved. And we always want to see when we can 
make use of these opportune times, uh, which actually is now. And so um, crypto isn't going to stop developing. Um, technology isn't going to stop innovating. Um, the multi-millionaires and billionaires out there, Mark Cuban and um, all, all of the, the great leaders and innovators uh, in the crypto space right now, Elon Musk as well, who just purchased Twitter, uh, who's a huge crypto enthusiast. Um, you know, it's, it's only going to keep expanding. And so if we can actually ride that wave, um, that's where, you know, as individuals, we're going to actually be able to benefit from it. And so the difference is, you know, being able to navigate with my emotional state to not make bad decisions when I shouldn't be, uh, to get into the right kinds of projects at the right time, uh, making the right decision because I have the right kind of research and know how, you know, my own, my own, um, mind is clear to know, what I'm getting into. And so Vetter platform and the ecosystem that represents Vetter actually is that. That is the foundation to be able to uh, really um, clear away all of the, the rubble and all of the overwhelm and all of the chaos that really uh, doesn't need to be there. That is just part of the nature of growth and expansion and development. Of course, any industry has that, but we can look to it you know, sift away, come into Vetter and, and actually get uh, this great opportunity to find projects and do the right kind of research and have the support. And when you come in and you can actually speak and communicate to the members and the community and talk about uh, projects, you can ask questions, you can learn how to navigate better. Uh, some of the members in Vetter, if you come into the Telegram, they will tell you that they had no crypto knowledge before coming into our community. And they came in not having any idea about anything related to crypto, purchased their first cryptocurrency, you know, with our educational support and the community supporting them. And now, you know, some of them are over six figures in profits, obviously not um, anything, you know, from our personal uh, advice, but this is something that they came in and had the know-how and knowledge and support to be able to navigate. And so it's really important to us to be able to showcase really good projects and to provide that as a research tool and foundation. So the question is absolutely, this is, I believe, and we believe at Vetter, one of the most opportune times to come into projects and to find good projects and to have a place to really know how to do the right research and really feel supported and um, and at ease in in this in this great time um, where where a lot of, of financial gain and and freedom financial freedom is is possible here. Jack, a, a question for you. How does, uh, as, as an advisor um, or in general with, with Better, how do you work with the with investor? How do you do you help them to get into into the new projects? So, so you know, as an advisor within the company, it's all about making sure, as I mentioned earlier, that we're you know scaling uh, the correct areas as and when you know the community gravitate towards them so making sure that the 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 relevant team members have the right resources to be able to you know cope with an influx of of community members or you know i think sometimes the the dev team might be like hey this is a pretty neat idea let's pop that on the platform and all of a sudden it's like oh it was a really good idea everybody loves it okay we need to <laughs> we need to work a bit faster on that one so um with regards to you know me directly helping uh, investors day to day i am swamped with meetings and making sure that you know the internals are, are correct and that you know that that then ripples outwards to make sure that they have as robin elegantly mentioned the you know the tools and you know the resources to help them in this time and i think just to reiterate your point it when you look at it in a really simple basis the best time to invest in the market is not when everything is really expensive so i think people have that incorrect Kind of not, maybe not incorrect, but it, it's definitely uh, it seems like an obvious mindset at the time. But when you step back, it makes much more sense to be investing when the market is down. The lower it is, you know, the more potential there is for, for profit there. Um, obviously, that's not financial advice, but it's uh, it's just something to look at. And with regards to you know these projects and their utility, and as Robin mentioned again, there's no shortage of development. 
every single day. There are so many projects launched on, on, on so many chains, whether it's general tech companies, whether it's blockchain companies and or, or projects. And, you know, all that utility is still out there. So the opportunities for investment are just amazing every day. And it's just about having the, the correct resources to be able to find them. And, and again, that's where Veta comes in uh, to, to help those investors. Because I remember when I started my, my investment journey, you know, almost a decade ago, and I thought one year in, I was like, this is amazing. You know, these markets are so cool and everything's so fun. And then, you know, next week I'd be like, <laughs> it's really very hard. You know, I'm very confused. Yeah. And there was a lot going on and a lot of misinformation. And then you've, you know, a lot of people are fighting against billions of dollars worth of marketing to try and influence you on to, you know, jump on something else and maybe sell something and go over here. And that's why the, the Vetter ecosystem is so important because it's just giving you those tools to research the utility for yourself and bringing forward as a community in general, what everybody's seen and potentially agreed on saying like, yes, these are what showcase a great project. This is what showcases a great development team. Operationally, these guys are amazing. You know, they're doing really good things in the space. And that's where people can sit back and go, oh, it's not so noisy anymore. I can see this very clearly and it's nicely organized. And yeah, I think that's that's one of the major, major ways that we're, we're helping those investors. And um, before you, you mentioned um, Skylabs, so um, why new or how new projects and devs team would, wa would want to get involved and how they get involved, how they can contact you and, and so on? Yeah, we're, we're going to have a full onboarding process. Um, the, the relaunch of Vetter.ai will be featuring the CrowdX and the Skylabs brand, and uh, anyone coming in will be able to navigate that way. We're going to have video tutorials as well on the site that will explain how things work and how to navigate and how to get involved. So our onboarding process is in development, and we're going to be launching the Launchpad uh, specifically for the use of developers and projects, likely in August slash September. Um, mm -hmm. So the staking and the token is launching in June, um, but the actual Launchpad will come out August, September. Uh, likely all, all will go well for that. And so at that time, Uh, we're going to have an onboarding process. Uh, they're going to have to meet certain criteria and fill out certain forms uh, to let us know where they stand. And then based off of their uh, answers and responses, we'll be able to let them know maybe they qualify for the V-Sale launch pad instead, or if they qualify for the Skylabs, we're actually going to have that criteria that Again, KYC, they'll be able to meet as well as uh, additional uh, requirements that we're going to have for these higher tier projects. But we'll, we'll be also working with them from different levels of being able to support them, um, advising them on, at certain levels. So there's going to be different tiers of involvement um, and developers uh, will really enjoy that process because it's going to help them uh, a lot. A lot of the teams are going to want that additional handholding. Some of them may not need it if they already have a robust team in place and advisory boards in place. Um, but a lot of times I find that most projects don't have their structure set up properly, their entities set up properly. Most mm -hmm. uh, developers have this really great vision and, and even the technology behind it, but they don't have any idea what the blockchain really is and how to launch. Uh, I've read so many different white papers from developers and their tokenomics were off. And then when they went to launch, they failed. And I reminded them that, you know, they, they actually needed someone on board who understood uh, the blockchain environment. And so there's, there's just a lot of challenges. And so Skylabs will really, uh, of course, ensure that if there is a project launching in, in that launch pad um, that they have to meet certain criteria in order to be able to launch and if they will want our support um, you know we'll be able to lead them in the right direction so there's going to be different aspects of that as well as different revenue streams that that we're working on uh, to uh, really get the word out. Um, we're working with different influencers internationally, like in Italy. Uh, we're going to be at the Blockchain Rome event. Uh, we're, I'm actually heading to Rome today to meet up with Jack for dinner, and we're going to be at the uh, Blockchain Rome uh, for this beautiful event, uh, meeting with people, uh, including Binance, 
uh, different professionals uh, to really get the word out. We have a billboard in front of the Spanish Steps. We've covered the entire tube uh, with Vetter branding, um, and we're doing a lot to be able to support the international growth. Uh, and, and the launch pads will support that as well. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was in Croatia just a week and a half ago for the lockdown event and uh, Better had a booth. I also did a, a speech. And one of the things that came up in my speech was that um, a lot of developers really don't have the support to to continue growing past their launch. Uh, they, they raise this money and then all of a sudden they don't know what to do with it or they run out of it. And uh, so one of the things that came to us at the at the event in Croatia was, uh, wow, I just wish I was able to launch on a launch pad that could actually help me make sure that I made it through the launch properly. And so that's really one of the things that we're going to be working on. And, and that will be um, obvious that, you know, in, in the upcoming months, uh, when you come into vetter.ai and you'll, you'll see in the Skylabs uh, an onboarding process that we're, we're currently developing um, as we speak. And um, how do, do, do you have a strong Italian community? What, what do you think about the, the Italian sector yeah we um we've had a strong community in dubai actually which is interesting and so uh just recently uh the italy community has taken note um from the time that uh, we've started advertising it's very actually uh pronounced with uh the interest um very uh very many people are interested in italy uh, specifically because we're we, we just started advertising and marketing uh, at a big level. And so um, we're, we're very excited because we feel that it gives people here an opportunity to be involved. Um, one of the things, Jack, that maybe you can touch on before we, we move on here is uh, one of the things you said was that in, in Europe, uh, the, the mindset is different than, than elsewhere because uh, the, the investment money or the income that people are putting in is not like a debt to income ratio. It's, it's not mm -hmm. money that they're putting on credit. It's actually money they actually have to invest. So uh, it feels a bit different here. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's more um, interest and more opportunity for people uh, to actually uh, want to, to make use of their investment money. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. And uh, it is a good point, you know, what you said, and it, it is very relevant. Uh, I'm, I'm currently in Rome now so i arrived uh, a few days ago and i've spoken to a, a good few people from all varying ages and you know just chatting away what you know what do you do where do you work or why are you here are you business or pleasure and speaking about cryptocurrency and get, getting into those conversations and then um, it's always the same question oh do you know any products uh, projects to get into you know or oh, what, what are the best projects to get into and everybody always asks the same questions and it's well uh they never ask do you know where to find those projects do you know of any tools that, that can help me? You know, because my answer is always, of course, anybody can suggest projects, you know, all day, every day. But it's personal opinion mixed with a bit of common sense sometimes or, you know, market research. Everybody knows what Bitcoin is. So that's always a, you know, a safe suggestion. But the, uh, the general consensus is people, they need these knowledgeable areas with, with good information um, to get into. And I think the money management, you know, as, as Robin mentioned, is 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 good here you know this not uh, you know i've not really heard of i don't think anyone taking out loans or using credit cards to buy cryptocurrency or anything like that and in general the people i've spoken to say you know hey i make this much money i have a spare you know 400 euro 400 pound whatever it may be each month and i'm looking to invest in cryptocurrency and my first thing is to say well educate yourself you know f find a platform and especially even before i i knew vetter existed my suggestion was always you know, have a look at TED Talks, read this website, have a look at these articles, educate yourself, because then you'll actually be able to answer your own questions and you won't need to, to, to ask those. And you'll, you'll, you'll go down a rabbit hole, so to speak, which is, is fun and also never ending, as I'm sure we all know, that cryptocurrency just keep going and going and going. But it's super exciting and it's innovative and, you know, it's, it's almost a hobby. It, I mean, it really is. It, it just kind of takes over you in, in certain scenarios. But, uh, yeah, I think the the possibilities of of education when it comes to the better platform are you know really going to change that for, for people it's important to have that space that kind of collates everything and and gives a almost a 
just a safe house for people to come in and express their opinions and do some research. And it's this, you know, it's not super time sensitive and it's not stressful. It's just, hey, there's this whole area where I can build this around my own views too. I can follow the people who invest in similar projects with good utility that I feel that, you know, are, are the best in the space. I can have a look at this content in Better University that makes sense to me and I can keep track of what I'm learning. So, yeah, I think uh, it, it's exciting for sure. So thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for your time for this interview. And for sure, uh, enjoy Italy. Oh, oh I will. thank you. That's thank it. You, Amelia. Yeah, it's a pleasure thank you so to much. be here. Yeah, appreciate it. Was very it. Thank interesting. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>